Well, it's time for us to talk sport and mighty George joins us this morning. Uh, George, thank you so much for being part of the show. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. All right, then. Just a quick one to it. Uh, the newly composed interim management committee for the Nigerian Professional Football League will be inaugurated today by the president of the Nigerian Football Associ uh, Federation, I beg your pardon, Ibrahim Gusau, as composed by the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Mr. Sunday Dari. And that's in line with the 10-year football master plan as approved by President Mohamed Buhari toward the revitalization of domestic league. And uh, that the IMC would be in place to oversee the affairs of the league until a proper professional league board is put in place uh, statutorily. And we're being joined by Mighty George, like I mentioned earlier on. He's a sports analyst. Mighty George, once again, thank you for being with us. Thank you, once again. All right, then let's start on a lighter note. Uh, we saw Barcelona tweeting in Yoruba, Agba Bola, celebrating Asisa Toswala. How, how do you respond to this? I mean, first of all, Barcelona know the power of uh, specific public relations, uh, reaching out to the Nigerian fans, the populace that, uh, you know, certainly have their numbers. If you're a social media manager, you definitely want Nigerians on your side because you get the numbers. That tweets actually, as at this morning, has elicited 15,000 retweets. That is more than any tweets that uh, Barcelona Femenina put up, at least at the start of the season, except their Champions League triumph, of course, uh, last season. You know, so, so it's, it's very wonderful. And then let's talk about the subject, or the object, if you like. As you said, Ashola is, uh, you know, just coming back from France, where she, you know, emerged 16th best player in the world, and had to come back in their first Champions League game of the season, you know, scoring two goals and assisting two uh, in their 9 0 win over Benfica. That's their highest ever Champions League win in history. Before then, in 2017, they had beaten a team 6 0. That's the highest. But this one was, you know, something, something spectacular. And, um, you know, Barcelona, apart from giving out the MVP award of that day, decided to go a step further and celebrate her, you know, the Nigerian way. This is absolutely fantastic. She deserves it. And I think that Barcelona know the power of great PR because they have lots of Nigerians on their sites and new followers. Uh, I'm sure about that. All right. Uh, um, George, I'd like you to speak to, to um, what we're losing um, as a result of our inability to put our house in order, to have a proper league that at least can be compared to the best in Africa, uh, Nigeria being Africa's most populous nation and having the kind of uh, economy that has been in the past described as Africa's largest economy. What are we losing out? Barcelona, Feminia, football, female football team is trying to, you know, market itself and like you said, uh, you know, embark on public relations to the Nigerian market, which is one of the biggest in the world. You have, you know, the, the male football teams like Roma, you know, even tweeting, you'd be asking yourself, maybe it's a Nigerian handling their English Twitter account. What are we losing by not putting our own house and our leagues in order? I mean, you've said it. You've, uh, Nigerians, Nigerians love organized football. They love football as it's played in Europe. Uh, so anybody that thinks, oh, Nigerian football should be, you know, a different kind of football characterized with hooliganism, you know, lack of security, um, lack of purpose and vision. Some people just own football club for political reasons. And that accounts to why I could nickname the Nigerian Professional Football League, the Nigerian Political Football League, because about 16 or 18 thereabout of the teams played in that division are owned by governments. And you know what that means. They have to go to government house to wait for subvention, um, they might not even employ the best people. It's just going to be uh, political appointments instead of business people. And that's why, you know, anytime I have an opportunity, I can talk about my football club, Vandals of Football Club. There's nobody who would not know that uh, we're getting close or we are probably a semblance of what's going on in Europe, using social media very well, ensuring match day hospitality. Uh, you know, we even have premium suits when uh, we play our football games. So, 
um, some other teams are taking off now, sporting leggers and all that, social media getting top notch broadcast of games. So a team like Barcelona know that it is you know it's business. And the way to get this Nigerians on our side. Yeah, apart from celebrate, they just celebrated something that's so exciting to us, and it, that, that's that's won us over. You know, won all the retweets, and they can, you know, do their sales and do their marketing like that. So, Nigerian Football Fest is not on TV. It's not attractive. It is riddled with hooliganism. You know, match fixing and all that. I, I just hope that the newly constituted the interim management committee of uh, the league would be able to start their journey. Right. to reshape the league. But we're definitely missing out a lot. We are not doing football the way football has progressed to right now. We're still doing it, like, of course, ages ago, which is sad, very terrible. So, so let's talk about, you know, your thoughts now, just as you have uh, landed talking about uh, our league now, uh, domestic league and the intentions of the president. Uh, with the election of the NFF uh, president and the fact that there's going to be a committee that will be inaugurated, what do you think uh, the priority should be? Well, priority, I think um, there, are, there are a host of them. Uh, all those vices reading the MPFL, I think they first need to think about how we can improve infrastructure. Um, infrastructure is, has been a pain, a major pain. You don't have attractive stadia. Um, since this is even coming from government, can we see a policy inside this 10-year master plan? Because, by the way, the constitution of this interim management committee is, uh, you know, an excerpt of the 10-year master plan. So the NFF is agreed with the sports ministry, probably for the first time, that instead of carrying on with the old MPFL, which is the you know elite league, although of course we have NNL, we have NLO, we have NWFL. But instead of carrying out carrying on with the uh, composition as it were of the of the elite league, let's let's dismantle it. You know, let's tear it apart because it hasn't helped us so much. And let's let's come with disappointees. So I think that it should first start uh, by interfacing with government. Thankfully it's emanating from government, so to say. Uh, to see how they can provide infrastructure, stadia, you know, fix some stadia. That's the job of governments, you know, not to have, not to own a football team. I've ever heard that Liverpool be owned by the Liverpool, you know, state government. No way. Give that opportunity to the private you know, sector. Anything that government can do, they can help out with security. They control the security apparatus of, of the state. They can help out with the infrastructure so that we can have good stadiums that will be very great for broadcast. They can help out, help out with good roads. You know, when you're, when you're abroad and you're going to watch a game, there's a train station that stops in front of, you know, Stanford Bridge. Maybe I'm going too far. That's England. We all know how uh, miles apart we are. But countries like Egypt are doing. Countries like Ghana are providing, you know, bus terminals and good roads to lead to those stadiums. Because that's the only way, if, if fans don't feel secure going to the stadium and even being at the stadium, the league is not going to be attractive. You're not going to make money. You're not going to win your loyalty like Barcelona is trying to do to, to Nigerians who are now so focused on European football. That said, the issue of refereeing should be critically looked into. The Premier League actually controls, you know, the uh, what was known as the English Premier League, you know, uh, the English Premiership. It's now called the Premier League. It's it's controlled by this all the clubs, and there's a private corporate connotation to it. It's not actually handled by the FA. That's why you hardly hear the English FA, except of course you want to uh, talk about the three lions of uh, of England. So help out with that. Um, the referee, like I was saying, is controlled, managed by a company who pay them salaries, who select these referees. That's why you see the likes of Howard Ware was a police officer. They are looked into, checked, investigated to see that they are people of, uh, you know, unquestionable character before they are admitted to be referees. And not just hungry people who don't have a job to do. Because this is business. We're trying to make sure that this football is lucrative. Let's not just pack anybody in it, political appointments or this or that. You bring somebody uh, because he speaks, you teach him the laws of the game, he doesn't even know everything, and then at the end of the day, he ends up disgracing himself or collecting money and things like that. 
So, I mean, that, that behoves on whoever is going to manage the issues of referee. Because if we have fair football, uh, fair play football, and this is broadcast to the whole world, I'm telling you, sponsors will come. Because this is how transparent, you know, the other leagues are. Abroad. Mighty and a whole lot of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, I mean, you, you've said it all. Um, I wonder if it's anything can, good can come out of, um, of Nazareth, you know, I wonder. Because um, when we were in school, in secondary school, we're taught in, uh, in computer studies, giggle. And giggle, we're told it stood for garbage in, garbage out, you know. Um, do, we have, do, do we have the, the, the personnel, you know, both from the ministry uh, of sports, the same ministry that uh, withdrew Nigeria from basketball after the females qualified for the World Cup or the Olympics, whichever it is, they withdrew them. We've seen so, so, several, you know, instances of um, uh, uh, poor decision making. Do we have the 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 personnel, the the the, uh, the manpower, the brains, the people with the ideas to even if it's an IMC? Okay, interim management committee, ten master plan to bring anything different that we've seen in the past. And I'm wondering why we don't have guys like you. All right, guys like you, <laughs> you know, I'll, coming I'll up to say we want to run football in in my state, in my country. You know, because yeah. I mean, do we have the personnel, the manpower, the people, the brains? You know, unfortunately, um, you know what the sports ministry is most times. Except it's it's actually changed in different climes now. Sports sports because sports is supposed to be under business. Um, in Nigeria, it's always been under recreation. So um, government pays little no attention to it, and that's why any president that comes and given his manifesto doesn't even include sports. Sports is just you know they call it youth empowerment, you know, which is not supposed to be so. Um, so the kind of people that you have there in the ministry, which is the government setting up, you know, like I said, appointees, uh, who come into the ministry not really having any prior knowledge, just like the Minister of Sports. He has never been a sports person. He was just a director in the NCC, you know, his last outing in, in, in a top position. And then he's a member of the APC and then, voila, he's a, he's a Minister of Sports. And so you come into the terrain trying to adapt, you ruffle feathers, you know, step on toes, have a running battle with the MBBF, have that with the NFF. You mean well, but you really don't know how these things go. And you need to get the right people, which is what they don't want. It's, it's very clear in all spheres of this country. You hardly get the right people there because this one's at it. You need people who would work with you and do the bidding. And maybe at the end of the day, your tenure is up in eight years. You say, oh, I did this, I did that. But you can actually do more. So um, we have a few of them. Let's even talk about the members of the IFC. Um, Bega Lebele is a former uh, chairman of the House Committee on Sports. I think that was in the last dispensation. And uh, since then, he's been without a job, as it is. And um, the second, the vice chairman is the... Chairman of Aqua United, Elder Paul Bassi, veteran journalist, no doubt, has calf experience, uh, led Aqua United to their title win two seasons ago, which is great. Um, you know, coming in representing the administrators. We also have Calvin Wuka, he's a London based journalist. Um, you know, he's followed football for a very, very long time. And we we'll talk about the glory days and now the bad days, um, which, is, which is also great. I mean, someone, one of my colleagues there, Making it in. And then I noticed that the secretary is was a former secretary of the Volleyball Federation. So you see, <laughs> and the day a political appointment, <laughs> you know. Oh, well. So let's just hope that this 10 year master plan, which was, you know, unveiled about two months before the election, they would abide by it. It looks very good, but not everybody was consulted, you know. It's just a group of people who sat down and did their research and put it on the ground. All right, so quick well, one we're now. just hoping uh, it's a new dispensation, so we're hoping that uh, let's watch how the how the affairs put this thing. Judge, we have to go, but justice in a few seconds. Uh, you have talked about time and, and our interest in our football. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask if you think that there might just be a plan in the way uh, for us to have the same prominence that you have other Premier Leagues having in the world. I mean, following TV time. 
So you look at the La Liga, you look at the Premier League, and all of the you know time that they have. Is is there a way? Do you think that you know this administration is thinking towards that direction? And uh, I'm asking now. Uh, like I said earlier, we can only hope so. If we talk about football specifically, the new man in charge, unfortunately, um, the, his predecessor didn't help him start on a good footing because immediately after he won the election, you know, Amadou Pinnock posted, reportedly posted in a group that have successfully installed one of my men, you know, and that message leaked. So already he's being seen as a, as a stooge to the former, um, you know, NFL president and uh, now FIFA and CAF member. And if you look at the antecedents of his predecessor, you know, I mean, the, the number one thing that excelled there during the administration was himself because from nobody he got himself into a, a FIFA council of only just a few men in this world. So uh, we hope he will not be as selfish. We hope that he carries everyone along. The ministry and uh, the NFL prior to now have not been in good terms. Let's hope that they're in good terms. It looks like because the IMC was uh, a, a proposal from the government and the NFF has taken it. So there's some good intention. And you know how they start, you know, it's the first month of uh, the new uh, NFL board. They're going to be hoping to hit the ground running. They have appointed a task force for age grade teams to ensure that we only have true under 17s, true under 15s, which is great. I hope those people have the zeal and all that. So, um, Messi, we're just hoping at the moment. Uh, but if you look at it, it's almost the same people who came back who saw the NFL president, has been chairman of chairman for eight years prior to now. So he's just, you know, was part of the same and just moving forward. Um, let's watch him. Let's watch and see how it goes. But the way, you know, everything was arranged, the desperation, the dollar spreading, you know, high and beta and all that, um, which characterizes for them um, um, elections in Nigeria, went to play. And when that happens, you want to ask questions. We have to let this go <laughs> now. Uh, for the want of time, you have said that we'll watch and see how it pans out. Unfortunately, you've also highlighted that you know we have the same crop of persons, and we might necessarily not, you know, get a different result. But let's see how, uh, you know, what happens after now. Thank you so much, Mighty George, for joining us this morning on the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, then. Uh, we've been speaking with Mighty George. He's a sports analyst. He joined, uh, he joined uh, all the way from Aquabum State. And that's it. That's the size of the show this morning. It's been very engaging and interesting. And if you missed out on any part, it will be right for you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. On YouTube, we're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Aboko. Have a great morning. And my name is Kofi Bartels. We return on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Good morning.